All right, folks. So what we're going to do today is we're going to have a look inside the uh, Confrontation 3rd Edition rulebook, the Fantasy Skirmish game for 28mm figures. As you can see, the cover already tells you everything you need to know. <laughs> no, not really. The art's really, really nice. In fact, one of the things that captivated me with this range was the art. They had, they had this very nice graphic design look that was, uh, for its time, quite revolutionary. It also has all of this, like, you know, interesting designs, you know, tribal designs, which actually gave it a slight look or a slight uh, vibe. You know, so you knew it was a confrontation product just by just by design alone. Over here, you'll see uh, some rubber that's been melted onto the book. If anybody knows how to get rid of this piece of rubber from a you know hardcover book, I would be more than happy to listen. Now, this rule book is from Rackham, Rackham Miniatures, which later became Rack Rackham Hobbies. Now let's flip inside, flipping page, the logo, uh, Red Dragon, which I think is very nice. As you can see, the book has seen better days. Um, again, if anybody knows how to remove all of this, I'll, I'll be you know, in total appreciation. Then we have the credits and the table of contents. As you can see, the table of contents is rather full of stuff and then here's the art some of the art and a uh, precursor to what you're going to get inside because there's going to be a whole lot of great art inside i promise you now first up we are introduced to art lush um, and this is one of the uh, fa not factions but one of the groupings of factions and this is the way of the light under the wheels of the light uh, the uh, Celts of the Celts of the Cesare's clan. He had the Alliance of Alahan, the Griffins of Archelaini, uh, the Sinwall Elves, and the Utopia of the Sphinx. I would love to do a, a lore video, but only if anybody's interested. Uh, then I'll sit down and actually talk about the different uh, factions. But these one, two, three, four, five fall under the Ways of the Light part, or should I say, side. Um, of the conflict in Arklash. And then we have the Meanders of Darkness. Over here we see uh, the Limbos of Acheron, the Alchemists of Durst, the Celts of Troon Clan, the Dwarves of Midnor, the Akishan Elves, and the Ophidian Alliance. And then we have the Paths of Destiny. And under the Paths of Destiny, you got the Dwarves of Kern Naborg, the Goblins of No Dunkar. The orcs of Bran Okor, the Wolfen of Yilia, the Devourers of Viltis, and the Daikini Elves. Now, this is great because you've got a whole bunch of different factions. There's six here. There's six here. And there's five here. That's 17 factions, and they're divided into three areas um, of um, influence, I guess. Um, for you to choose from and uh, so the range is very very big the variety is definitely there again if you want me to go through the lore uh, just leave a comment or else we'll just leave it at, uh, as this is the um, background for the uh, confrontation game moving in we have chapter one and these are the gaming material as you can see um, they also talk about Ragnarok Simply because both games um, are pushed at the same time. One is a much smaller skirmish, and one is a much bigger, bigger game, more regiments. And to play this game, you uh, you have cards and you have tokens, and as we'll see later, the cards, the tokens are just as important um, to the game as well. First up, we look at the cards, and as you can see, the cards are filled with information, and because of that, you have couple of pages committed to explaining what each cards are this is the other kind of art that also is included in the game you have the designs that look like this this uh, i want to say brown scale uh, brown scale ink art which i think is also very cool um and it's very much part of uh, the look the whole uh, confrontation look so yes the cards um and then the counters as you can see the counters um tell you what you need to know 
you know, what's happening on the, on, the, on the table as you're playing it. So you've got counters that tell you what stun, light wounds. So this is the wound counters or the wound tracker. And then you've got the uh, counters that you know, are action. And then you've got the dispersion, dispersion template where it's more like a scatter template. But as you can see already over here, they're already featuring the miniatures. And because they're featuring miniatures, a lot of folks who are flipping through the book were already very, very interested. You know, you want to know where the miniatures came from. And at the time, the artwork, um, the artwork for the miniatures were fantastic. Ahead of its time, if you ask me. Now you have the general rules. And the general rules is basically what it is. It's general, general rules. And you have what it is that is on the card. So you got uh, the movement, initiative, the attack. Defense, aim, fear or courage, uh, discipline. Um, yeah, and all of these actually tells you everything you need to know about the character, including a bit of like, uh, um, you know, abilities, uh, equipment, if, if anything, uh, to add on. And then you got the war machines. And the, of course, they have a different, a different um, stat, stat line as well. Looking at this, shows you what the different sizes are everything from the giant you know all the way down you can see the different sizes and with confrontation it's nice because everything's of a different size something which during the time warhammer did not really have simply because at that time everything was more or less the same size except for a couple of um a couple of um, character, mo character models or special models but this one you have one two three four five six six different sizes as opposed to three or four. I thought that was kind of neat. And then we have uh, the bases, um, again, different sizes, um, then the force, you know, the, the force list. Now the thing about, um, the thing about confrontation which is really, really great is the exploding dice. When confrontation first arrived in my shop, uh, what was really, really great was um, the exploding dice. We never had exploding dice before that. At least I haven't. I haven't played with exploding dice. And this one was kind of great because um, on a roll of six, you get to re-roll the dice. So any, any, heroic, any heroic action is achievable, uh, but with a one, is automatic fail. So for example, if you roll a six and a six, and another six, and you roll a one, it fails. It doesn't matter how many, how many sixes you roll prior, um, which is great. I think, I think that's a great rule. Yeah, so it, it adds a little bit of risque to just rolling uh, for you know, your ability. Then you got your testing of characteristics, and then you have the wounding of opponent, which is also kind of interesting, kind of innovative at the time because you get this chart and you roll two dice and then you, you, you check on the chart what happens. Now, this game was at a time a little bit more um, narrative. So it'll actually tell you where the wounds go to and the kind of wound you have, which again goes back to the tokens that we saw earlier. Um, how each token, like for example, if you're light wound, you get another light wound, you go up to a medium wound. And um, I thought this was really interesting because it, it gives you the narrative and you got, uh, you can get damage in your legs, you know, your uh, belly, you know, chest, and so on and so forth. So I think this is really, really great. It adds, it's not just, you know, three plus and you wound, right? In, in confrontation, it's three plus and you wound the belly. So that's great. I, it's, in terms of narrative, it's fantastic. Again, the tokens, as we spoke about earlier, tells you the wound levels, light wound, serious wound, critical wound, and how it goes up, upwards, how it stacks up. Then you got the wound penalties, um, and then every game using miniatures, uh, line of sight and field of vision is important as well. Um, then the concept of contact, what contact means, because some of the figures have very strange poses, and to put them you know, face to face will be a problem. So you know, there's, there's the uh, concept of contact and then the overall confrontation. Yes. Now, then you have the strategic phase, and this is basically the sequence of, game, of the game, uh, which starts off with rallying. Most, most games starts off with this, the rallying phase, the activation sequence, the tactical role, and then they break it down. Now, what is the activation phase, which is chapter four? Here's where you draw the cards uh, to play. Um, for confrontation, you actually stack the cards and you activate according to how you want each one to activate. They have a concept here called the reserve, which is basically the option for you to actually um, keep a card in reserve so you can activate it later. 
uh, which is great. It, it adds a little bit of um, the, uh, I want to say, tactics to the game in terms of activation. Um, yeah, and that explains that the passing of one turns, taking turns, and then the, ex uh, the examples of a card draw, the activation itself. And then if there are uh, cumulative actions, how it runs out. So it basically, this is basically a description of actions and how it works. Um, this is the whole section for movement. Um, I think it's great that they actually show you how it works and they use the actual miniatures. So they draw you in as well, uh, looking at the different miniatures that they have on offer. I think, I think they got it really, really right uh, with this rule book. Moving along, you've got the charge penalties. And then the orientation at the end of a movement. Moving along, you've got the flying figures. And then, as with any movement, obstacles, firing, choosing a target. And because, you know, this is not just a hand to hand kind of game, because there are some shooting or some, some practice that can shoot. shoot. There's a rule for it. They've got a full art page for some really nice piece of art. Now, this is the combat phase. Now, the combat phase basically shows you how to run combat. Um, um, and it's not just one on one because you can actually, like, you know, set up three on one uh, battles or two on two or three on two and how you, you spread out your attacks. They call this a uh, phrase splitting. And as you can see, they're giving you examples as well. And um, combat resolution how to set your combat dice. <clears throat> In the confrontation game, what was, what's really nice is you get, you get your dice, your pool of dice. In your attack and you decide how many dice you're going to put in your attack and how many dice you're going to put in your defense and this is pretty much i i would say if there's anything this is the game the meat and bolts of the game because it it allows you to you know tactically you know look at the situation and decide how you want to allocate your attacks um okay one level below one level above just uh, you know three plus or four plus to hit then you got your resolution of exchanges the unfolding of an attack More examples and more nice figures. So the combat phase in the book is really, really great because it actually goes through each one or each different situation. That way, when you're actually playing, you know, you have a better idea because not everybody has a club they can go to to play. So getting one of these rule books is great because with a lot of examples in your rule book, yes, there's a couple of extra pages, but what's really, really good is the fact that you have a situation where the player actually has a chance to. Um, look at what is happening without there being a demo uh, then you got your pursuit movements which is yeah it's all like pretty standard combat stuff in other games but this is how it's done for confrontation and then you got some really really nice artwork some of these art pieces were actually lithographs and you know we here at the store actually have a few that we've put up then you got the uh, end of the game round the mystic phase the maintenance phase and timeout um the game actually has um has uh, different elements, which um, you know everything from spells, which is kind of great. And that come, that's come a bit later. Like, let's let's do some chapter seven, influence of fear. Now, if you notice earlier, we talked about a stat that has fear and courage, which is amazing because when you have that situation, you have one stat that sorts it, so you don't have to have a different slot, and that's economics or card design. And in that in that sense, um, courage and fear is basically what it is. If your stat has fear, that means you know the that is the stat that you roll off on when you're trying to uh, uh, attack and whether it causes fear. And courage is you know how much courage you have to take on whatever's coming against you. And then you got your immunity, you got your route. Moving along, you got more artwork, very very nice artwork. And then you have leadership, the very very important thing in any game, in any game. The you can have the best army ever but leadership is what makes you win or not win and there's a whole chapter that covers leadership or what is leadership for um and then they break it down so you got your lot of the dead different kinds of leaders your wolf and chiefs and then you got your incantations now the incantations are the magic part which, which i was we started to talk about earlier and here's where you got your magicians here's where you got your mana that you can use um and as you can see another table over here um and this table actually looks at different domains, which is also kind of great. It actually adds another level, which a lot of uh, games that use uh, uh, magic tend to try to do well. 
I would like to think that uh, confrontation fits more or less nicely. So you, you know, they break everything down and it, there's, a, there's a rule for how everything is built. So yeah, so there's how to cast a spell, how to counter magic. And you got your mana recovery and mana. Mana is basically what you use to juice in your magic. You got your um, things that you summon. And then you got your spell books, which is really, really nice because this brings it back to it being very, very more narrative. You got your spell books and you got a list of spells they use from uh, the uh, some, ver some versions of that very popular Warhammer game had an array of spells to choose and actually the gamey part of the game was actually getting the right spells because you knew when you had the right spells to the table, you pretty much have it. And this game has a list of spells, which I think is great. Some other games do not have a huge list of spells. And as of the recording of this video, uh, Mantic Games is, um, let us see now, doesn't have, um, Kings of War does not have a huge spell book, but this one does. It's got different spell books from uh, Hermetism, Neomancy, Shamanism, Technomancy, all the different, all the different, um, uh, I would I want to call it different schools of magic. And again, scattered through the book, all these great figures. So, you know, inadvertently you're pulled in, you're invited to admire the images and admire the figures, which leads later to you actually acquiring them, buying them. The, uh, the, the big problem is they all look really, really great. And the biggest frustration for me when it comes to confrontation is you try your best to get them to, to look the way they do in the rule book. And uh, more often than not, you don't succeed. Now, moving along, you've got like um, black magic and then you've got faith, which is a different, it's a different thing altogether. It's another layer. Um, and this is where, you know, you, you find the faithful, the believers. Again, miracles. When it comes to confrontation, they, they try to put a whole lot of stuff in this. And, um, and I think this is also quite great because you've got your litanies, you know, uh, and this is where which um, domain you come from. You know, you have to go, you got your litany of light, for example, for you know the way of the light. You know, you got your litany of destiny for those from 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 that, and you got your litany of darkness. And it's great because you have this other level of things you can pull out from. And I guess it's about time for another another nice piece of art. And as you can see, it's a nice piece of art over here. Moving along, you got war machines. Why not? Let's have some of that. Uh, in a skirmish game, having a lot of war machines um, tends to um, make, make it power creep a little bit. So in this in this sense, um, some of the power, some of the some of the war machines are uh, are slightly small, but some of some were some actually were, were kind of huge. So you got the characteristic for your war machine. Again, each of your each of your war machines come with cards, and they have a different stat line from what a normal fighter usually looks like. Um, then you got your um, you know the how to activate you know in, uh, capturing war machines and stuff like that. You got your firing. You know the scatter, which is which is the other to other token that uh, or um, template that which we never talked about, which we talked about earlier, which we're going to talk about right now. And even the design, it's got a nice tribal thing, which is consistent with the whole um, whole game. And the damage and the structure points also follows the same design as the wounds. Okay, now you got your whole stats. You've got your your fluff. You've got all your um, different uh, ways to play the game. Sorry. Or game components of the game, it's now time to learn how to play the game. And here is where they break down the sequence. So you got your deployment, you know, you, your approach phase. This is where you set out your, you know, your cards and stuff like that. Um, they also had this uh, magazine called Cry Havoc, which actually gave you different scenarios. But you could actually you could actually come up with scenarios, you know, as and as and as you choose. And um, the game works on centimeters, actually, to be honest, which is uh, very interesting. Um, uh, for people who don't know it's centimeters, this might be a little bit confusing. And um, the the gaming space is much much smaller. It's a uh, two by four for those for those of you who are who are not very familiar with uh, centimeters. And as you can see from the deployment zone, even the deployment is a bit different. What is great about this is you're immediately forcing both forces to come to each other and and do battle. And of course, if you're running tournaments, you know, it takes up less space. Then you have generic, generic scenarios. Then you got uh, examples on how to build an army. Um, armies are built you know, with your army points. 
And this is how you set your army points with your opponent on how much you want to play with. The allies and the allies list. And then you got your appendices for uh, abilities. Um, this game actually has a, a whole lot of um, keywords which were later used by used uh, to great effect to add even more flavor. Um, at this point, I don't know any other game that used uh, keywords um, at the time. Oh, maybe I do, but I, I sort of forgot what it was like back in, the, back in the day. But yes, you have different keywords and each keyword has abilities, which made uh, confrontation even more of a skirmish uh, role-playing war game. You know, you got all these different abilities and each of them are different. And you have abilities uh, which are more common to certain factions um, um, and there's certain abilities which cross different factions and the list of abilities is huge it's it's, uh, it's page after page after page of different abilities that you can look through and um, you know when you pick when you pick up your your figure you know tell you what it is you've got war machines the uh, abilities for war machines then you got your special equipment which you can add on and you got your artifacts again and on you can actually buy the uh, the packs to get these artifacts which were quite fantastic again more art um and then now if you were to if you were to be playing this game at the time there's always a, a worry on uh, some problems and erratas and here's where they they actually cover uh you know how they go about the erratas and also um, basically gives you um uh a cards that are forbidden which is kind of just kind of kind of strange to have in a, in a rule book but I, I i guess you know it it made it it made it easy for in terms of design to to work with and then you've got your you know different artifacts that have been revised you know you've got your you know your contents that have been revised which is kind of great it updates the book so when you when you have the old rule book you can actually like work with 3.0 and or version version 3 and work your way into into everything basically uh, appendices and update i think that i think that's great i think that's fantastic it's definitely moving moving forward scattered all over the book again art and as you can see it's broken a whole section to to updates now the thing is at the time there weren't any like um, places for you to go online to like, look for it so this was a very very welcome inclusion to a rule book as you can see it's pages and pages and pages worth of appendices in fact after this event even there were even more appendices but let's not get into that um because you know no no rule set you know survives the initial serious play or tournament play so as the as the things uh evolve you know the appendices appendices gets bigger and uh, thicker so yeah appendices appendices no, appendices um so on and so forth uh all the way to almost the end of the book right here finishing off with a nice piece of art oh yeah you have this uh section for uh, tournament rules and how to do tournaments just i think it's kind of nice tournament rules gives you an idea you don't have to follow it but you know it helps and then you've got your uh, your i want to say it's your game sheet and uh last piece of art just before you say goodbye and yeah and that's pretty much it that is the uh, confrontation third edition rule book hardcover very very nice um the, mine's a bit banged up actually if you if, if you were to pay, you're paying attention but i'm glad i have this and um i'm thinking of like perhaps playing a couple of games with this now that i pull it out of the uh, storage yep so have you played this game if you have uh tell me what you thought i'm curious to see how many people still go back and open their confrontation rule book and have a game or two because i know what those figures deserve to be played and just because there's no rule set it doesn't mean you can you can't go back to an old rule set and have a game yeah so that's pretty much it i hope you like this flip through uh if possible um like and subscribe um also um if you can buy us a coffee and don't forget to enjoy painting this video